Hello and thank you for joining me. My name is Felix Tanner and I will present the research paper written by Joy Lanier and myself. Driving from a distance, challenges and guidelines for autonomous vehicle teleoperation interfaces. So are autonomous vehicles really autonomous? According to Cook, the belief that humans can be finally automated out of the loop still proves to be a fundamental misconception. In 2019, Waymo drove a 1.4 million miles and recorded a need in human intervention every 13,000 miles. We believe that remote driving of autonomous vehicles, also called teleoperation, can be a cost-effective solution for use cases in which vehicle artificial intelligence fails to comprehend the road situation. We call it teleoperation as a service. Stating the above, it's important to realize that teleoperation is not a trivial task and it reduces many challenges. The purpose of our research was to unveil teleoperation challenges and provide suggestions for design and development of future teleoperation interfaces for driving autonomous vehicles. In order to unveil the existing teleoperation challenges, we undertook four major research steps. Step 1. Semi-structured, in-depth interviews with 14 experts from industry and academia, who have extensive experience with autonomous vehicles, teleoperation, command and control, or the auto industry in general. Step 2. Informal observations of eight people who drove an autonomous vehicle remotely in a remote test site. In the presented images, you can see the evaluated teleoperation station and the Israeli National Experiment Center for Smart Transportation, which are located 58 kilometers away from each other. Step 3. Data analysis. After video recording and transcribing the data, we used an inductive approach to the qualitative analysis of the text following the guidelines of thematic analysis developed by Brown and Clark. Step 4. Creation of user interface design suggestions in the form of on-screen augmentations to bridge some of the discovered gaps. After analyzing the data, we came up with six major categories of challenges that remote drivers experience. The first category is lack of physical sensing. Interviews reported that because of a physical disconnect between the vehicle and the driver's seat, it's difficult to estimate accelerations, speeds, road inclinations, and feedback from pedals. In some cases, this resulted in feelings of nausea and dizziness. The second category is human cognition and perception. Interviews reported that it was a challenge to perceive and understand the remote environment and that they were in constant state of a high alert. Additionally, they reported that it was hard to grasp the spatial location of the vehicle. For example, we noticed that it was challenged to maneuver between several cones without overriding them. Estimating the correct distance to objects on the road was an additional challenge. Finally, it was hard to develop the proper mental models, in particular in regards to amount of force that should be applied on gas and brakes pedals. The third category is video and communication quality. Since all the video information is delivered via the network, latency and latency variability is a major challenge, which can result in low frame rate or insufficient video resolution. Additionally, lack of image stitching or camera calibration can increase remote operators' cognitive load. The fourth category is remote interaction with humans. When a driver is located inside a vehicle, he can easily communicate with passengers, other drivers, pedestrians, and law enforcement representatives, oftentimes using nonverbal communication and cues. On the other hand, when the driver is remote, such communication is missing and requires development of appropriate mechanisms. The fifth category is impaired visibility. In addition to built-in technical challenges such as latency, the driver's field of view is limited to the representation on the teleoperation station screens and thus she is unable to activate her peripheral vision or change her position to improve her point of view. Additionally, changing lighting conditions can cause the screens to darken depending on the sun's location, thus increasing the remote operator's situation awareness. The last category is lack of sounds. When driving a vehicle from within, 
one can hear all kinds of sounds. Sounds of rain, sounds of vehicle engine, barking of a dog or leaves that touch its roof. All these sounds are missing in remote driving. Thus, degrading remote operation situation awareness. After discovering the teleoperation challenges, we tried to address some of them by augmenting the video feed using visualizations. We present some of these suggestions in the following slides. We suggest to add UI cues to bridge physical disconnect. In the presented image, one can see a continuous green element across the main teledriving screen, which visualizes the contact between the driver's foot and the gas pedal. The more the operator presses on the gas pedal, the wider the element becomes and its opacity decreases, and vice versa. In this visualization, the blue human figure should move left and right according to the force that the riders feel when inside the autonomous vehicle. To increase remote operator situation awareness, we recommend not only to show that her assistance is needed, like in the presented image, but also to emphasize the intervention reason. Did the camera stop working or an animal blocks the road? Adding contextual road information may also increase remote operator situation awareness. When we drive a regular vehicle, we remember that we passed the speed limit one kilometer ago. But when the remote operator is called to action, he might be missing this information. Visualizing future vehicle's direction based on the current position of the steering wheel has the potential to improve spatial orientation of the remote operator. Adding depth perception cues, similar to what is currently done in rare vehicle cameras, can improve remote operator's depth perception and estimation of distances to nearby objects. Based on our observations, we assume that stitching images from overlapping video streams can significantly reduce remote operator's cognitive load. Reducing cognitive load can also be achieved by calibrating video cameras. The presented image shows how uncalibrated cameras can distort color, distance, and image brightness. Another way to increase situation awareness is to visualize video in network quality and make the remote operator be aware of the various challenges she is currently facing. Finally, we suggest to integrate artificial and human intelligences and utilize the advantage of each intelligence type to make the overall experience much more efficient and safe. Thank you so much for being with me. We invite you to read our full paper and hope you enjoy the conference. Goodbye.